Hey everybody, it's Sith Lord 066, aka MJ Conroy. Um, going ahead and getting this done with uh, now Dark Ascension. Uh, gonna start off with Archangel's Light. Um, I can see playing this actually. Um, not so much for the two life in every in your graveyard. It's not that powerful, but the shuffling your graveyard into your library could be very good in a color. Uh, white, which doesn't notoriously have that. Now, if you're playing something else, um, and there may be better effects in different colors, but if for some reason you're running like an Avacyn, uh deck or something like that, or uh, Eight Tails, where you're running mono white, this could be very good, giving you an effect that you don't normally have access to. Uh, the Gather of Wills, I actually like, especially for EDH. Um, it's more just a fun card. Not only that, uh, unlike Coffin Queen, they don't ever get their creature back. Um, so, unless they've got like Homeward Path or something like that. But for the most part, she just says gain control of creature. Uh, Drog Skull Reaver. Um, yeah. 3 5 flying, double strength, life flying, gain life, draw a card. It basically says, hey, I, I was cast on 7, I was made for EDH. Um, especially in your guys' St. Traff deck or the. Previously aforementioned hypothetical spirit deck, um, you know, it could be good. Um, also, it just seems like fun, so I would totally play this, and uh, yeah. Uh, Elberus the Binding Blade is probably honestly a no, but I'm going to definitely put it as a yes, and I have played this in my Kalia deck for flavor, um, and have actually connected with it, turned it into uh, Withingar the Unbound, and then, like, once that happens, like, it really does get ridiculous quick. You know, 1313 Flying Intimidate Trample is no joke. Um, and especially even when, like, uh, it, one of my other buddies killed uh, one of the other dudes we were playing with. And, like, it ain't whenever you defeat a player or whenever he kills a player. It's just whenever a player loses. So, boom, he's a 26-26 next turn. And like, oh, crap. And uh, it did work. It, it didn't win me the game, but it did work. Um, Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, definitely an Olivia deck. It's very powerful. Um, I would totally run it. Uh, Having Go Lich is very good in a either Lazav, uh, Grimgrin, or Thraxamundar deck. Especially in the Thraxamundar decks, then you have access to three different colors of mana, so maybe you can cast a little bit more out of their card unless it's green or white. Um, just remember, real quickly, if you're new to EDH and aren't familiar super with the rules, even if you're running a Chromatic Lantern or something that would theoretically, um, I just did air quotes by the way, uh, theoretically allow you to go ahead and cast a card that's not in your general's colors, you can never, ever, ever um, produce mana of a color that's not in your general's um, colors. Um, so even with a Chromatic Lantern, you still can't cast green or white. Um, oh, next is Hellvault, and uh, I'm going to reach out to you guys for this. If anyone could figure out any situation that this card would ever be good in, please tweet me at SithLord066. I have no idea why this card was made. It just seems bad. Um, that being said, absolutely not. Uh, Huntmaster the Fells, again, uh, this card is amazing and standard but not so good in EDH. Um, you could, you know, making the token is very easy to do in Commander, um, and usually not in red-green colors, um, and it seems like a lot of work skipping turns and things like that when there's much, much better you could be doing. And a 2-2 body and a 2-2 wolf for four is not nearly as good as it could be in EDH. Um, just another example of a standard card that doesn't really do much. Uh, Micaeus the Unhallowed, uh, very good. Definitely belongs in any zombie deck. Um, possibly as a zombie general. I would probably still go with Geth, but Micha I mean, I wouldn't fault you for running Micaeus either. Um, being able to give all your dudes undying is pretty darn good. And if he isn't your general, he's definitely in one of your 99. Um, even not necessarily in just zombies, even in like a mono black Skithrix deck or something like that. Uh, Moonvel Dragon. Um, again, Kalia, uh, being able to give your dudes not only fire breathing, but what I call super fire breathing, where it's like everybody, it's the Oprah Winfrey of fire breathing. Pay a red and everybody gets a plus one, plus oh. Um, it could break the game real quickly 
if going unchecked. Uh, especially in combo with the uh, Balefire Dragon. Um, being able to basically whiteboard if it connects. Ravager's flipped. Uh, Soren Lord of Innistrad, absolutely. Uh, this card is amazing in Gave. It's like being able to put in 3-1, uh, or I mean 2-1 Sapperlings off the first emblem. Usually you're going to hit about two emblems before it dies. Uh, also, even just putting in the 1-1 one, one Black Vampire, dude, which you can, you know, put in three of those and sack to get the spirit. And yeah, it could be very, very good. Uh, Vorpeed, I'm just going to straight say no. Um, I, I This card I thought would be much better than it was, but I thought that would be in standard, not uh, EDH. So we're going to the rares now. Uh, Alpha Brawl, uh, maybe. This could theoretically just be a board wipe if they got a big dude. Um, it could also just theoretically blank in EDH, so I'm not really sure that that's a great card. Uh, Call to the Kindred, uh, no. Um, you don't, there's just, uh, just no. Uh, counter lash, um, unless you're being that guy, you don't want to run a lot of counters, and the few counters you do want to run is like spell crumple, and, um, better counters than counter lash. Uh, curse of bloodletting, no. Um, uh, well, maybe, actually, uh, this could theoretically be in a red deck, um, it's a lot better than Avatar Slaughter or the other one where all was it Furnace of Wrath I think where all creatures do double damage um, I don't like playing symmetrical effects so I do like playing asymmetrical effects or if I do play a symmetrical effect I want to make sure that I'm not playing it fairly um, meaning that I have a way to break it and they probably don't like for example Coat of Arms is a symmetrical effect however if I'm playing Tribal and my opponent isn't then I have the advantage even though it's technically a symmetrical effect. And then if they're playing tribal as well, I'm just going to not play the card. Uh, Curse of Echoes, um, again, it, it, this actually might be fun. Um, depending on your meta, if someone is playing a lot of sorceries and instants, uh, being able to do this I think would just be funny. Uh, Curse of Misfortunes, no. Uh, Deranged Outcast, absolutely not. Dungeon Geist, no. Feed the Pack, no. Uh, Fiend of Shadows, even in a Vampire deck, I wouldn't run this. Uh, Flayer the Hatebound, nope. Gerald's Messenger, uh, in a zombie deck. Um, this dude is going to be much bigger than just the 3 2, because there are uh, 3. Four, like four to five vampire or vampire zombie lords that are going to give this dude pluses so I mean he's probably going to be like an eight something but also you know if you do have your coat of arms and or um, door of destinies out it's just even bigger but even just three get, lose three life with undying is still it's still pretty good is what I'm trying to say it's a good utility creature put this on a uh, mimic fat and it gets bad real quick uh, Jarl's Mind Crusher. Um, I think I run one in Lazav, um, but that's about the only situation I could see it in. Um, and that's just to, you know, get something in the graveyard so that I can copy it. Uh, Ghoul Tree. Eh, I, yeah, I could see this. Definitely in a Mimeoplasm type deck. A 10 10 isn't a weak dude. And uh, something like a Self Mill, Mimeoplasm using your graveyard as your second library. Um, you could probably get this out very quickly, turn three, turn four. Uh, Graph Digger's Cage. Um, I, I would actually probably run something better than this. Basically, uh, I don't know. It's not terrible. I mean, there are a bunch of cards that blanks. Uh, Green Sun Zenith and things like that. On top of that, um, not being able to cast cards in graveyards or libraries is okay. Um, the only problem is uh, like something like the Mimeoplasm still act can activate his abilities through it because you're not casting the cards you're copying them uh, Gravecrawler uh, no actually um, can't block and it's a 2-1 and it's a 1 drop 1 drops aren't usually that great in EDH unless it does something really cool um, you don't really want to curve 
having gold rune binder uh yeah i could play the, i would definitely play this in a um a grim grin deck or a uh thraxa mandar deck just putting one one counters on all the zombies seems very good hell rider uh in a cranko deck it's the only non goblin i run and i am very flavorful and like for example we we'll refuse to run grave titan even in my zombie deck because it's not actually a zombie it's a giant and uh, same thing with Sheldred, even though it would be very good in it, I, it's not a zombie, so I'm not running it. I just could not bring myself not to run the Hellrider, because it could just insta-win in a Krenko massive amounts of Goblin deck. Um, the Increasing Ambition, very good. Uh, Tutor Twice is super good. Um, and again, the mana cost doesn't really matter. Uh, increasing Confusion, again, Mill is not really a thing. Devotion is great in Taza because you're putting 1-1s one into play. Um, and then, um, you know, exiling them to exile a creature. So this basically reads, you know, drop 5, exile a dude, and put in 2 white, two one ones, which is really good. Uh, I mean, Savagery, no. The Vengeance, no. Well, the Vengeance, actually, maybe. No, actually, no, definitely not. Jar of Eyeballs, there's a thing called Sensei's Dividing Top. It's way, way better. Uh, that's a flip. Lost in the Woods, nope. Uh, Blade Master, no. Chandra, no. Actually, Mondra Shaman. If you're playing um, Karavik, I actually don't hate this uh, because she becomes more damage uh, off of creatures cast so they would be taking the uh, casting cost plus two so I could see it just even flavor wise uh, Predator Ooze, uh, it's indestructible indestructible is awesome in EDH so I would actually probably play this uh, Ravidus Demon, Arch Demon no, Requiem Angel whenever a non-spirit creature dies you control this goes in Taza again um, because now you're killing uh, your dudes and you're getting two spirits for the uh, the price of uh, well you're getting six you're basically able to no you're getting what four I'm trying to remember how this works basically it goes in a taser deck is what I'm trying to say um, you're going to go ahead and sack a dude you get three or a one one white yeah 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 Okay, so basically this is, you get two spirits for the price of one card. Um, because Taza is you sack a black card and you get a white spirit. This card is you sack a non-spirit, get a white spirit. So you sack your black non-spirit card and you get two white spirits. It makes Taza go a lot quicker. Is what I was trying to say. I eventually knew I'd get there. Uh, where are we at now? Do, do, do. Do Seance, no. Sudden Disappearance, no. Thalia is actually a commander, believe it or not. Um, she's in a Voltron style, real fast deck. Um, it's not a big one, um, and it's probably not even that good of one, but it is a cheaper one. Uh, Thraben Doomsayer, nope. Vault of the Archangel is like ridiculous in EDH. It's probably one of the most powerful lands in all of EDH. Uh, if you're running black and white, in any sort of combination, you should be running this. Uh, just Death Touch Lifelink is so powerful. And finally, um, Zombie Apocalypse, the card that was designed for EDH, I'm pretty sure. Um, so good in a zombie deck, and it, it, flavor-wise, you just have to run it. So if you're running zombies, you got to play this card. Um, okay, so that's Dark Ascension. That went a lot quicker than the first one. Oh, only 14 minutes instead of 30, so half, about half the time. And I will see you for uh, Avacyn Restored.